in today's video, I'm going to show you another design in my 31 Days of Halloween, and this one is going to be a 4D coffin that opens up with a skeleton inside, and if you're thinking to yourself, hey, I've seen you do that already. Well, you have. This was actually my first 4D design that I did. I want to say it was five years ago, four or five years ago, and it was the first thing I'd ever done with a hinge, and it kind of opened a whole new world for me, so this is a type of design I always like to come back to every Halloween because I love it so much, and it's just kind of nostalgic for me. This year, however, I took it one step further and I made it so the skeleton can sit up. So after you open the coffin, the skeleton's not just laying there still, he just, you have a little wire underneath and you just move it around a little bit and then he sits up and it adds just a whole new element to it. I absolutely love this. Don't forget to check out Helen's design too. Hers is actually quite similar to mine, so you can just see a different take on it. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to begin with an overlay of clear acrylic and so I'm doing this because I'm painting the nail with black gel polish and so the underneath color is really irrelevant if you are applying a fill over somebody then if they have a an acrylic design underneath it doesn't matter because that black gel polish will cover it up or if you're doing like me and it's a fresh whole thing you could sculpt with black acrylic if you prefer or not up to you so I'm going to file the nail into shape with my e-file to make sure it is nice and smooth and it'll be easy to work on top of and then paint one to two coats of black gel polish on top of it it's up to you as far as one to two coats whatever the coverage is of your gel polish is what you need to pay attention to and then a layer of gel sealer over the top of that and now we're going to begin doodling our little template so I've got a piece of paper and I've got the nail next to it and I'm going to use that as a guide to shape my coffin. So I've got the little beginning coffin shape and then I'm going to draw the sides coming out away from it. I don't know, did you guys ever have to do these types of things in like fourth grade where you had to draw what a cube would be flat if you like unrolled it? This is exactly where that knowledge is coming into play. So don't ever say those things in school were useless because every once in a while they come back. So now I'm going to lay a nail form backing over that doodle and I'm going to start sculpting all of the different pieces. And you need two of most of them. So those longer side rectangles, you need two of those, but you, and you need two of that first coffin shape. You only need one though of the squares. So the top square and the bottom square. So you don't need to worry about making two of those, but you need two of everything else. And so you're going to sculpt them and make sure that you don't sculpt the two pieces that are next to each other at the same time because they're going to end up getting stuck together and you don't want that. So the great thing with a nail form backing is after you sculpt a couple of the pieces and you're confident that their shape is, we you know what it needs to be and it's not going to change, then you can just slide it over and you can still see your doodle underneath and you can work on two different parts. The hard part with that is that if you aren't, you know, very good at keeping track of what all of the different pieces are, it can get a little bit confusing when it comes to assembly. If you don't, you know, if you can't think about, okay, this piece is here and this piece is there, sometimes it can just get a little bit confusing that way. So now I'm going to begin sculpting my second set of that longest rectangle and go through and start filling in those. And when you're sculpting all these different pieces, if you happen to forget one, you can always go back, save your doodle so that you can go back and, you know, make another piece if you happen to forget one because sometimes making all these things to make sure that you do have all the pieces can be a little bit harder than you might expect. So now I'm going to be sculpting that main coffin piece with my same brown acrylic. And this shade of brown is super dark, darker than I want my coffin to be in the end. So to lighten it up a little bit, I'm going to brush over some really, really light tan acrylic over the top of the different planks and then use a dotting tool to scrape across that lighter tan to carve in the shape of the wooden planks. I want this coffin to have a 3D texture to it so it really looks and feels like it is made of just some scrap wood that was really hastily put together. So brush that over the top of each piece and then draw those little lines in. And one thing that I would do that I did all at once later on that I would have probably recommend to do sooner is I also went and I made some perpendicular lines that give you like the different endings of the wood planks, which I'm doing now. So just kind of randomly make those other lines going across. It would work a little bit easier on the ones that are that I did first if I would have done them sooner. So I'm going to do that over the two um, tops of my coffin. And if you're wondering why I did what is the bottom of the coffin that's being glued to the nail, the reason I did that is because I wanted to be able to choose which top I liked and if I did them both then I would have the option to choose whichever one I thought was better. 
So you give yourself a little bit of opportunity to pick and choose and be particular. So now I'm going to assemble my coffin with nail glue and some more acrylic. So just start anywhere basically and just work your way around it. And this is where you have to be able to kind of discern which pieces are which. And if that's something that's you know, not easy for you, then come up with some kind of a system. So at least, you know, it might not be obvious to anybody else, but as long as you can understand what your process is, that's all that matters. Mine was kind of all over the place as far as where the different pieces were on my nail form backing. So when it goes to, when you do go to assemble, you either have to be able to really visualize and tell, okay, this piece is longer. So it goes here or have a system. So it's up to you and just do whatever you think you need to. So I'm going to make sure all those pieces are nicely glued together. They're all super thin that, you know, they kind of are still a little bit bendable. So if you need to bend something to get it to work, you have that option. So just make sure that everything is glued together. Sometimes when you're gluing one area, a different one will pop off. That's because nail glue is the bane of my existence and it got stuck to my glove you know, all of these things when people, every once in a while, somebody will say, you really are good with nail glue. That's because I crop out some of the situations where my design gets completely glued to me. But so now I'm going to take my e-file and a very narrow bit to carve a hole right through the middle of the coffin. And then I'm going to line that up onto the nail and just hold it at this point. So don't actually like glue it down yet, but just take and hold it. Then take that bit and make a little scratch on the surface of the nail and then you can move the coffin to the side and then drill a hole through the center of the nail right where the coffin will line up with it so now i'm going to go back to the template that i made again on a nail form backing and i'm going to use that as a guide to sculpt my little skeleton and all of her pieces so when you're sculpting your skeleton you want to not attach the body together. So you don't want to make like a spinal column where the skull attaches to the thorax and then, you know, going down. You want to make sure that everything stays just a little bit separate because we're going to use a piece of wire later on to make the spinal column. If you don't want this extra 3D element where the skeleton can sit up, if you're just like, you know what, that takes us too far. Keep it simple. My original coffin video from way back when does that where it's just the opening coffin it's a different style of coffin too so if you want some variety spice of life go and check out that video but that gives um, just the regular stationary skeleton in the coffin the coffin still opens but the skeleton inside is not mobile so that gives you that option too if you want to look at that so i've got my head my skull separated from the um, spinal or not the spinal from the thorax or the chest and then I have my two little arms and now I'm going to be sculpting the pelvis and then my legs all the way down. And that can all be attached. You don't have to worry about that. That's going to just be glued down. And that actual portion of the skeleton is stationary. It's just the upper body that sits up and can kind of turn back and forth. Like she's looking around, which I think is just so creepy and so cool. The fact that that can move like that, almost like a little puppet is just really quite quite cool. Like I said, I've made this other coffin that's actually quite similar before. It was my first four-dimensional design that I made so long ago. It feels like forever ago. It's probably five years old now, five, six years old. Oh, well, probably five years old, that tutorial. But it was a revolutionary design for me because I'd never done anything crazy like this and I got hooked on it and that's how I got to where I am today. So if you ever want to know how or what started my craziness, you can thank that design. So I'm going to glue my coffin to the nail, make sure that you align the hole that's in the coffin and the hole that's in the nail so that it goes all the way through. And then after you have that glued down, I would really recommend securing it with some clear acrylic underneath it so that it does not you know, get bumped off, but then you're also going to need to glue your little legs down into the nail. Make sure that they are below the hole. I'm going to bend two very, very thin little pieces of wire into a U-shape so that each one gets bent into a U-shape and then string a gold bead onto each U-shape and then glue them inside the coffin so that the bead is above the edge of the coffin. So the beads are just barely sticking up and make sure that you don't get any nail glue on the actual bead. You just want to get nail glue on the wire. Then after you have that, I'm going to take some brown acrylic and just apply a thin layer over the top of the wire so that those wires are nicely permanent and not going to fall off for any reason at all. So just brush that over that same thing. Make sure that that acrylic does not get onto 
your beads and then hold the lid of the coffin up to that new hinge mark where those two beads are so just take a pen hopefully yours works mine was not working so great and then i'm going to take my e-file and a round very narrow round bit and i'm going to carve in those little indents for where the beads will sit so just like that and then glue the beads to the lid so hold the lid up to it, hold it really snug in place, drop some nail glue on there and then some acrylic, and then that will hold the lid onto the coffin. Getting it actually lined up is probably the hardest part of making that part. So now I'm going to take a, sec a section of thicker wire and I'm going to paint it with white gel polish. And then after it has that layer of white gel polish, I'm going to apply some gel top coat over the wire. And then I'm going to start gluing my little pieces of skeleton on the top, the upper portion. So I've got the rib cage, then I had too much wire, so I'm going to cut off some of it and then glue the skull down. And then after that skull is glued on, then you can also glue on the arms. So I wanted everything to be really dimensional. So I wanted those arms to be made separately and attached. If you didn't really need that little extra detail, you could have sculpted them with the rib cage when it was still in the nail form backing. So I'm going to round out the back of my skeleton because he will sit up or she will sit up and be able to look around. You want her to look three dimensional from all directions. So fill in the back of the skull with a little bit more white acrylic so that it's got a rounded, more realistic shape and do the same with the rib cage. Add some more acrylic to the back. You can also take and carve in the little shapes, the little indents of the different ribs with your acrylic brush onto the back of that rib cage too to make everything look extra extra 3d just go like that a little bit of definition wherever you can add it a little bit of 3dness to the spinal column and then i'm going to bend the wire this part is kind of tricky so you want to bend it back so you want to make a 90 degree angle so that the skeleton bends backwards just like that so that she's looking up if you're holding the wire down and then you want to leave a little bit of a gap a little bit of a space and then you want to bend it flat the other way so if it's not properly bent and you insert this piece of wire into the nail it will not work and if that happens then you have to re-bend your wire and each time you bend your wire you run the risk of ruining your skeleton so it is a very precarious process and just take your time and you know be careful with it so now I'm going to use some white paint and I'm going to be adding some highlights to my skeleton inside the coffin. So it's all assembled in there and I actually missed the part where I put the wire through the nail, but if it's properly bent, you can basically just put the wire straight through the nail and it isn't a huge deal at all. And it's not really that hard to get it properly bent. It's mainly just making sure that those angles are both really sharp right angles. That's the key to this. And then just take some white paint, like I said, and add all the highlights to add more details to your skeleton. If you don't wanna make her overly detailed and you wanna keep her a little bit on the cuter side, you could do that. Add some little black details like eye sockets, nasal cavity, teeth, a little bit of outlines. The outlines around her eye sockets almost give her the appearance of having eyebrows. And then after that, apply some uh, matte top coat over your skeleton and then she is all done. You can play around with her, have her sit up, have her look around. It cracks me up. I just think it's so cool. The little coffin opens up and then there's a little skeleton just sitting up saying hello. Like I said, it's a puppet. I hope you guys love this design as much as I do. Please share recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to see them. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future Halloween videos. Bye.